Hello everyone and welcome to the middle of nowhere. I'm Chase. And I'm Joby. And this is The Overrun. Good. That was the one. That was it. Yep. <laughs> Joining us today is the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. This is basically the uh, Defender that you buy uh, if you need to carry lots of crap. The Land Rover also offers a 90 and a 110, which are just shorter wheelbase versions. The 90 is a two-door, and the 110 is a four-door with a third row. This is just more junk in the trunk, right? The big boy, yeah. And by crap, Chase really means people. This can obviously see the most amount of people comfortably at least than any of the defenders in the lineup you know with the extended wheelbase this thing is ginormous yeah it's eight people yeah uh so yeah it's a it's a really big car uh it's obviously very high up right now because of the air suspension and the auto leveling system that uh, the defender has and i think all of them in the lineup have it but yeah it's pretty high up i mean i'm five nine so i know i'm a short king myself but it's pretty high yeah, up you're definitely uh paying for it too yeah uh yep. our sheet here says the the msrp is ninety two thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars which is cadillac escalade money yeah um obviously if you're kind of in the 110 market i think that you're probably more paying for the off-road stuff you 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 really just if you want to spend six figures and not look like an asshole this is kind of where you yeah. land. Because to me, the thing that I said is that for $92,000, you could buy a Raptor, a really nice Raptor, um, which are, is great off-road. Right. Uh, fairly luxurious on the interior, obviously not as luxurious as this, but has a lot of the same capabilities off-road wise that this does, um, and also looks insane doing it. But that's also a much bigger car. Uh, the proportions on the 130 and really the rest of the Defender lineup are much more favorable to city driving. Whereas a Raptor is really wide and very tall, which yeah. in some areas of the city, uh, like where we live, can get a little challenging from time to Definitely. time. Definitely. This is not quite as powerful as a Raptor though, is it? No. Um, no. So what you've got here is a uh, mild hybrid three liter inline six cylinder engine. This is kind of Jaguar's standard mill. They offer a few different power levels. This first edition car is, according to our sheet, making 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. So obviously that's quite a bit down on a lot of the American competition. Even the much cheaper Expedition Timberline is 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. Um, you can still tow 8,900 pounds with this, or 8,000, sorry. So that's still pretty good. Yeah, pretty healthy amount, but again, when you look at the rest of the competition, especially the American competition, you have others that maybe even be cheaper than this car that can tow even more capacity if you need that or have more power. Yeah, um, and the so. I think that the place that this really sets itself apart from the American competition is the interior, which we yes. are going to get to now. See you there. Bye. So here we are. I'm actually in the backseat of the Defender, and this is really where things start to be different. Uh, from the American competition. We'll talk a little bit more about materials quality later, but right now what we want to talk about is how things are inside for other occupants. I have quite a lot of room in front of my knees. I obviously have tons of headroom, um, and the real star here is the third row, you know? So, that said... Speaking of the third row, let's see how easy it is to get in and out of the third row. Help you out. Yeah. Ugh. It's not too cumbersome of a process. No, but let's see if we can close it on you. Yeah. You should be kicking and screaming more than you, the kid. Did I kill your feet? No, it's actually surprisingly okay. okay. But the seat is also not all the way back. That's true. I mean, so I'm now sitting in front of you and I'm, you know, five, seven on a good day. Yeah. I still have plenty of room here. I can even move the seat up more. Yeah, and the seats back here aren't too bad. What is surprising to both of us is that these seats actually uh, back here are heated. Yeah. Which they're... is really, really unique for a lot of SUVs. I don't think I've actually ever seen heated third rows. Yeah, there's also some little storage cubbies back there. For the most part, your third row occupants will be really comfortable. Yeah. I think that the differentiating factor, like most third row SUVs, is just going to be how tall the second row occupant is. Definitely. Definitely. Anyways, let's go take a look at the rest of the interior. Ugh. Okay, so now we're here in the front row, or the first row, where you would most likely be spending all of your time here in the Defender 130. 
Overall, I mean, I think the interior is really good. The materials used here, uh, a lot of really, really nice high quality leathers. Um, and some plastic the kind of nice over here with yeah. the rivets in it. Right. Very yeah. Rugged. So definitely a very rugged and off-road type of look. Um, you know, I mean, it's off-road chic. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> There's like, nice leather, but also rivets. It's like if an oil tycoon got really into off-roading, this is what they would buy, you know, or something like this. Like yes, correct. You know, it's totally the perfect, you know, all the materials are great. Um, you know, all the touch points feel Luxury. Yeah, everything. Your A and B touch points are great. Yeah. Um, speaking of touch, though, there is kind of Land Rover kind of bucks the trend, I think, a little bit mm -hmm. in that their infotainment screen isn't very large. Yes. They haven't refreshed the current Defender, which debuted in 2017 ish, maybe yep. 2018. Um, but that's honestly OK. Like the infotainment system is super responsive. Yeah. Um, we've got some shots of that that we'll probably move in. It's really not that bad. No. Um, I am getting used to the climate control situation. Uh, I'm actually kind of a fan of how you push the little button to do the heated seats or whatever. Yeah. I think that's very clever use of a physical button because yeah. I build that muscle memory. Yeah. Um, so by and large, I actually don't mind it. I don't love how you do the drive modes where you still have to hit this little button to no. like do that. But it's still, it's really like, it's perfectly usable. Anything that's weird about this interior, like we were talking about with the cruise control, you kind of just have to learn to use once and then you're done. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's a big thing. I mean, the cool thing is the Defender, when it debuted, especially like with the, um, with the climate control, it actually, did it just die? No, no. Oh, fuck. God damn it. That's fine. We can leave this in. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I thought our camera just died. I'm sorry. It's Anyways. Okay. But the info or the climate control situation where the actual button push in, a lot of other brands have copied that because it is a great way to integrate three or four different controls into a singular button, button. which is really great. If you're going to do haptics, do it like that, right? If exactly. you've got to cut buttons out of the interior for cost, do it like that, right? Because yeah. there's still a physical volume button, you there know? Is. Yeah. I don't know why it's all the way over here, but there's, there it's is there, one. It's there. I right? guess there's, there's controls on the steering wheel. Yeah. Uh, ours came with the refrigerator center console, which, which is, is super cool. Literally, um, my drink is still cold. Yeah, I don't know is. if you could see the condensation on there. Um, but this is, I mean, this is a close to six figure, six figure interior. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And there's a bunch of connectivity. There's a USB-C port and a USB-A port yep. uh, right and, here in and the center console. And a 12 volt as well. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's really well laid out. It passes the water bottle test. We can fit my big water bottle in the center cup holder. You just kind of got a jammer in there, but that's okay. It does fit quite nice, and it's snug in there. It's yeah, not, it's not gonna loose or whatever. Obviously, smaller cans are kind of an issue, but whatever. Yeah, um, that's true. I would rather things. fit my big water bottle. Yeah, for sure. But obviously, this is really just about as nice as Land Rover interiors get before you get to the super expensive stuff. Yeah. And now it's time to go and find out if it holds up on the road. Let's go. Stop that shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. I probably should turn off my hair and take off my glasses. Yeah, I guess you should. <sighs> so the Defender 130 driving now. Yes. It are. does drive. We are on the road. Yeah. It survived its off-road excursion. It did. Which kind of feels like a good place to start. You drove yeah. it off-road first. What did you think? It was great. I mean, it felt, it was, you know, very confidence-inspiring. I mean, we didn't go on anything, you know, any too crazy of a trail obviously no like super heavy bouldering or anything but i mean it really handled everything you know with ease i didn't really feel like the car was ever unstable in any way the no air, the air suspension rode super great too. yeah exactly so the air suspension is really the big point there is that you know it really just absorbs a lot, a lot of like the bumps and everything so honestly driving off-road it, it it's not really that rough as weird as that might sound no it? not at all yeah so it's it rides super smooth like we have both driven most of the big off-roaders yeah uh in you know kind of that space like the broncos ride really well off-road but like the air suspension just adds so much and obviously like you pay for that right like this is ninety two thousand dollars as spec the cold weather package is 500 which adds like crazy stuff like the heated windshield and washer jets and wipers um you know and the towing package adds all of the camera software that you need for towing yeah this is an expensive car yeah um but it definitely feels worth it off-road. You get, you know, there's a gulf between like we were talking about with the uh, 
uh, Timberline mm -hmm. is the uh, Ford Expedition Timberline that we were last up here off-roading. You know, the, there's about $10,000 between the Timberline we drove in this car. And to be totally honest, the $10,000 goes into material quality and off-road A tech. lot of off-road tech. I mean, you're getting the air suspension, the weight depth sensing, uh, wheel speed sensors. Oh my God, there's a bunch more. Like there's a lot of tech that you're getting. Like honestly, at first when I was very first thinking about it, I thought that that 10 grand was like a really big jump in terms of price point. But I think the value that you get out of that and in terms of all the tech that you get from an off-road perspective crazy. and- the, Just the articulation on the air suspension. Right? Yeah, I, honestly the air suspension alone is probably worth- Dude, it's so the nice. Extra yeah, absolutely, grand. 100%. Just that, and uh, then you get all the other stuff. And then obviously like the air suspension translates to a very Range Rover driving experience on the road. Yeah. You, know, you can probably hear it now, man. Like it's super, super quiet in here or yeah. you can't hear it now. <laughs> yeah, really. uh, It's super, super quiet in here. This is a great luxury car. Um, it's on-road manners are fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we were both kind of complaining about the steering just kind of not being there, but who's steering has good feel, you know, yeah. in the SUV segment. Like it's just, it's kind of a non-starter. It's totally fine. Um, this, interior is great it's really really comfortable i would spend a lot of time here without feeling bad about it oh for sure um yeah. especially now that we have discovered the bolster adjustment because yeah. we were gonna bitch and moan about the seats <laughs> um, uh, yeah and then while we were shooting b-roll i was like messing around in the driver's seat and i looked down at the seat controls and i saw the bolster adjustment and i didn't know about that yeah. when i drove my first test defender I, I don't know, ago. two years ago. Yeah. And I left that review going like a, a bad form for me, right? I left that review being like, oh man, like this sucks. Yeah. Like the, the seats are so There's no adjustability, there's no, it's awful. Like there's only lumbar, this is however much money. Yeah. Um, But to circle back to the on-road manners, the great thing about this car is the split personality, right? Like yeah. it's so easy to just like, leave this thing in like the auto drive mode select the intelligent four-wheel drive mode and let it pick a drive mode for you and just go yeah and if you really get stuck it has low traction launch yep. you can put good tires on this oh yeah i fail to see any real faults with the driving experience yeah and then the other thing too is like a lot of like the, like the self-driving stuff like so like lane keep assist and yeah well not self-driving be careful with that word sorry i don't, I, don't <laughs> mean I, I really just mean the driving tech or whatever yeah the ADAS. Assist. the ADAS, yeah, yeah whatever um but yeah i think that it was fine when i was driving on the highway earlier it seemed fine I didn't really notice it, which is Yeah, a the good fact thing. that you didn't comment on any of it is yeah. you I mean I made you struggle setting the uh, adaptive cruise control initially because yeah. I think that the layout is kind of dumb. It's yeah. just non standard. It's just weird. Yeah, and because it's like non standard, of course, that means that like I guess you'll get used to it, of course. This is probably more of a journalist gripe than like a you know person buying this car. Gripe, oh, for right? sure. Like I, yeah. it's it's again kind of a non-starter. We're really having to nitpick this car, is what I'm noticing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Which I think is the sign of a good car. If we're nitpicking, then it's probably pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's just an all-around really good car. I mean, you, you can really do it. I mean, obviously for ninety-two thousand dollars, you'd hope this, but you, other than taking it to a track, it can really do anything. I yeah. Mean, and even then, it's got enough power to, like, hustle around if you need to, I don't know, like, your wife is in labor in the passenger seat or whatever. Yeah, for whatever like, reason. I, I feel confident, like, taking this little bendy here at a pretty reasonable rate and yeah. really... The turn-in is, is great. Getting on it, yeah. The turning radius is terrible, but the turn-in... sounds okay. Yeah. Nice inline-six noise. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. You nice. get a little, I noticed you can kind of hear one of the uh, blow off valves. Yeah. If you do it just right, you get a little boom. A little doo. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one little dove coo, like boom, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it's great. Yeah, no complaints. So, yeah. with that in mind, we're going to park up and wrap this thing up. All right. Yes. The final thoughts on the 130 Defender. What do you think? I, so I drove one of these forever ago, back when I like first started getting press cars. And at the time the Bronco was like the hot new thing. Yeah. And I just really wanted to drive the Bronco and I feel like I kind of didn't give this thing a fair shake because now I actually like this a lot better. Um, even for $92,000 or whatever, 
you know, obviously that's not the Defender that everybody is going to buy. This yeah. is a lot of money, but the most important thing is that, like, for a car that starts at sixty three, sixty five, this $92,000 car still feels worth it to me. Because for me, it's this or an Escalade, right? Yeah. And I would rather have the off-road potential and a little bit less of that uh, Escalade vibe. Yeah. I just, I don't want to be the guy that drives an Escalade. Yeah. I'd rather be the guy that drives a Land Rover and has it in the shop all the time. That's the thing here is not only are you paying $92,000 for, you know, the off-road capabilities and whatever, but it's also probably going to catastrophically break on you at some point. And whether you're willing to pay $92,000 and then whatever it yeah. costs to. That's Obvi true. Obviously, I if you have this thing in warranty, maybe that's less of a yeah. concern Yeah, Audi rules, you. right? You don't own one out of warranty and right. you're probably okay. I don't know because like I'm sure that everybody who's watching this has heard stories from other greater automotive media of, you know, Spike Ferrison's off-road kit never showing up and like Doug turning his in because eventually it just was like not running great yeah. and it was in an accident and he decided to just be done with it. You know, like there's a lot of people that have owned and driven these and kind of had mixed experiences, but we also see a ton of them on the road. We were talking about it on the way up here, right? Yeah. Like we see a lot of them on the road uh, and people seem to really like them and I get why now having driven the car again with a little bit more perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's a good car to drive. It has all the modern conveniences that you'd want. Obviously, it heated has. Heated third row is huge, right? Yeah, heated that's third row. That's a big deal. <laughs> it's just weird. I've just never seen that in a car. But it's that's what I'm starting to expect at this price point, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely some over-the-top luxury items that you wouldn't necessarily see. I don't know if that's over-the-top. The fridge is over-the-top. The fridge is over-the-top. That's kind of what the I The fridge is definitely over-the-top. Especially in the front row. It's also, have... like, fast, which is great. We've obviously yeah. talked about that a little bit in our driving impressions, but just again, like I cannot stress that like 400 horsepower in a car like this, or well, okay, sorry, 395. 395. Before specific. I get you know, 395. Yeah. For the comments, you know, is enough. Yeah, it's plenty. It's more than enough. And honestly, you're not buying this car to have like some super spirited driving experience. You're buying no. it primarily for the cargo space or the people. Towing. The towing. But then also the fact that it can off-road and do whatever you want. It, it's really a catch-all type of vehicle. Um, but it's so perfect for everything. I totally see why yeah. like people just buy these. There obviously is this like weird cultural thing with them in the UK that we don't quite understand. get here yeah. or understand. It's like them right. not understanding the big muscle car thing yep. for the most part. Yeah. This is their Mustang. Well, it's not their Mustang, but it's symbolically. It's very symbolic and yeah. and atypical of the British mindset. And I like that a lot. I'd buy one. I'd buy one probably. I wouldn't buy this one, but no. I'd buy one. A different spec, maybe yeah. the one. We would we were talking about it like we would totally both buy like 90s with yeah. good tires and all the off-road stuff yeah. which is like the cool guy spec even so, even the 110 i think is just a little bit the proportions are a little bit shorter which i would prefer yeah um, and i mean just as a like final note you know like that's the great thing about the defender i think is that you can do like small cool guy spec car yep. right that may even come closer to this in price yeah and you can also just like total mom mobile yep but it also kicks ass off-road yeah so it if you need that customers. Maybe this is the car for you. But yeah. This we'll is... see you guys next time. Yeah. That's it. Bye. 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 We haven't figured out how to end these yet. No. We're leaving that in. <laughs>